I just went through two other pieces of video, and one was just introducing this concept, and I introduced it with the production possibilities frontier because that shows the outer edge of what we can produce given the resources we face. And then I shifted my term to the production possibilities curve, and with that we can see how, uh, why, why we could expect there to be an, in, uh, a not constant rate in trade-off between the production of two goods and that is because some resources are better specialized for one good than the other good, the production of that other good, and so we, we face increasing opportunity costs due to the specialized nature of resources. But now I'm going to take that framework and apply it to two other goods. Here, down here, I have to define these terms. This is capital goods. That's what it says there. And uh, capital goods, unlike financial capital, we're not talking about money. We're talking about tools. You know, in economics, the word capital means tools, property, plant, equipment, stuff that makes stuff. Okay, It's okay to interchange it in some cases, the term capital, financial capital, like in business, you know, they say, oh, he has a lot of capital, she has a lot of capital. Um, it's okay if that money is being used to buy tools, but otherwise it means something different. So here we're talking about tools. Up here, this says consumption goods. Might be a little hard to read, but that's what it says is consumption goods. Consumption goods are the stuff that we enjoy as households. Our cars, our, our clothes, our food, our entertainment, you know, our beds and our appliances. These things that we just enjoy as households, these are consumption goods. And we face a trade-off as a society in the production of these things. There's no prices or money in here, by the way. This is just our choice of how a resource our allocates, or how to allocate our resources. And it might be done through a price mechanism, but um, it's irrelevant. This is just the use of resources and the production of either of these two things. This is the production possibilities curve. We could do any of these combinations, but we can do one and only one combination along this curve. Only one point of this curve is what we can target. Okay, so let me come up with some hypothetical points that we might target. We might target this year, let's say point A. Or we might target point B. And I'm saying target because we'll probably have inefficiency in our economy. We know that because we have unemployment. Uh, but, you know, we kind of always do. And that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. So I'm saying target. Now, we might yield a different outcome based upon what we target this year, next year, or in a couple of years. Let's get in my So I'm going to come up with two hypothetical production possibilities curves to draw on here. And uh, we can't be at both of these. This is some hypothetical thing that might happen in the future based on what we do today. Okay. Hypothetically, we could be at this curve that I'm drawing now, which is pretty close to the current production possibilities curve in this year. And I'm going to label this curve, I'll say I. All right. Or we could maybe find ourselves in the future, in the near future, at point, or curve, sorry, let's say double I. Now, to get this model applied to this trade-off, I'm going to ask you to think about this. There's curve I, there's curve double I. This is the year, let's say, 2021. This is hypothetical. Hypothetically, I'm just going to write hypo 2021. We could be at one of those two curves. And then the purple is 2020. Purple is 2020. If we choose, I lost my cap. Okay. If we choose to produce at point A in 2020, of those two hypothetical curves for 2021, which one are we more likely to be at? Thunderstorm outside. If we choose cho choice A today, if we target point A, because we can't do A and B, we can do one or the other. If we target A this year, where are we more likely to be of those two possible outcomes next year? Feel like you have an answer? The answer is I. 
because if we choose A this year, that's a whole lot of consumption. Oh, I'll put an F there for A. It's a whole lot of consumption and not a lot of tools. And the great thing about tools is that tools can be used to make more stuff in the future. And these lines represent production possibilities curves. So if we make more tools by going to point B, we can use those tools to make more stuff in the future, either more tools or more consumption goods. But that means to do that, we have to have less consumption this year. And consumption is fun relative to making tools. So we have to forego consumption this year to have greater potential consumption in the future. You know what foregone consumption is? Saving. Because the money that we don't spend as households on our goods and services is the money that we are saving in our economy. And that is the money that ultimately funds capital production. So if we spend less and save more as a society today, our production possibilities are greater in the future. If we live like it's Mardi Gras today, our production possibilities are not as great as in, in the future as they could be. And as I mentioned before, this is the dismal science. I almost forgot this. Put my board down, I almost forgot this. Suppose for just one second with that now hopefully making sense. Suppose instead of pointing, picking points A or B, we really went to Mardi Gras all day and chose point C. What would that imply about our production possibilities of 2021? We're going to produce about as much consumption as we can and hardly any tools. Okay? We're not producing tools much at all, but you know what happens to stuff? Any stuff, consumption goods or capital goods, stuff wears out. Rust, rot, decay, things break. Uh, it's called depreciation, a wearing out of the capital stock. If we don't replace our tools, and at least the rate as a society, and largely as an individual, if you want to project this on the individual level, the model's pretty accurate. Um, if we don't replace our tools at at least the rate that they're wearing out, we will have fewer tools in the future which means our production possibilities in the future could actually, whoops, I should have used blue, because that's my future lines. Our production possibilities in the future could actually move in if we do to keep up with depreciation. So that's another fun facet of this. So I don't, I'm afraid I don't have a whole lot of good news that we're going to do. Usually I try to point out the, the uh, the bad news that maybe you hadn't thought about. That's, I don't know, I guess I'm just mean like that. But I hope it was a little fun.